Hi everyone, we're going to talk about the thermal conductivity detector used in GC in this video. And maybe we ought to begin with the definition of thermal conductivity. That's the ability of a substance to transfer heat from hot to cold. Here are some example values for, in this case, commonly used mobile phases in GC. Helium probably is the most common one. And you can see the units for thermal conductivity are joules per Kelvin meter second. Another name for the thermal conductivity detector is a hot wire detector, usually made of tungsten, rhenium, or platinum, and you'll see why on the next slide. Here's a diagram of the thermal conductivity detector, and it does in fact contain a hot wire, and this is where mobile phase is coming in from the column, and this is where it leaves. And in addition to this wire being hot, a potential difference is applied across that wire. And that potential depends on the thermal conductivity of gas flowing across the wire. So as long as mobile phase, or probably helium, is flowing across, that thermal conductivity is constant, the temperature is constant, and that potential difference is also constant. But as soon as your solute enters, things change. So let's imagine that your solute was propane. Would you expect the temperature in this environment to increase or decrease? Well, you really don't know unless I give you the thermal conductivity of propane. And here it is. And notice that it's much less than that of helium. So propane is not good at transferring heat from hot to cold. So that means that the temperature here should increase. And that also means that the potential difference is also going to change. So that change in potential caused by that change in temperature is how this detector works. Let me pause this video and show you a real thermal conductivity detector. This is an actual thermal conductivity detector. You can see it's really not all that big. And this TCD actually has four filaments. I'm thinking two were probably reference filaments just for carrier gas, and two actually receive flow from the column. Uh, if you look closely here, you can see that how for these two filaments, the filament is actually broken. Can you make out that little piece of wire just dangling off there? That's actually a broken filament. There is one still intact here. And it's probably going to be hard for you to see it. Oh, there it is. Um, the filament is that tiny thin wire above that golder wire. So that's a TCD. Back to the video. So I hope you, gr you agree with this advantage that it's fairly simple in operation. Another nice advantage is that it's universal. It'll respond to just about anything. It won't destroy your sample. So in other words, if you wanted to take your solute from the GC column, to the thermal conductivity detector, and for some reason you wanted to take it to a mass spec, you could. And look at that nice linear range. The main disadvantage is the poor detection limit. It won't even work with capillary columns, which remember have such a low sample capacity. And also, as you can probably guess, it won't work unless that carrier gas and solute have different values for thermal conductivities. So that's all I have to say about the TCD. Thanks for listening and hope you enjoyed the video.